Welcome back to Lockdown Literature with me, Mr. Davis, coming to you from the bunker. Last video, we talked about the three fates, the situation, the meaning, the poet's attitude. We found out that the poem is about a man who can't accept his fate, who at the moment of death cries out to the three ladies, the goddesses, to change his fate. He cannot accept dying. He can't accept his fate, his life has led him to this moment. He wants eternal life. He wants a chance to rewrite his wrongs. But who is he to ask that of them? His request is a mistake. And the three fates trick him and punish him. And instead of granting him happiness, they grant him a curse. And he has to relive his life eternally, over and over again, in reverse. And that's what we're up to here in stanza three. In stanza three, the poet communicates his suffering and the agonies of passion. He's lived his life. He's experienced all of the things. He knows what has happened and he can't change any of it. And he knows he's got to now watch it all be removed from him. So his torture is his punishment for asking the three fates to grant him eternal life. The long vowel sounds here really convey that suffering, that pain, his agony. And it's significant that even the happiness in life can't bring him any satisfaction or fulfillment. He can't find any solace in his life anymore. His passion, the things that drive him, his love, is a torture to him. Writing poems is the example that poet gives it from the end backwards he's not creating he's destroying he's watching everything that's important to him being removed and it makes us ask and wonder as well that if he indeed did jump in the water to come out like a cork backwards that the problems that he had in his life he can't resolve the passions and everything he has to go back and relive those problems, relive those happy moments and just watch everything just be taken away from him over and over again. He has to brush away the tears that have not yet fallen in his eyes. He's lived those happier moments, he's lived those tender moments of joy and creation of um, the, the manifestation of his passion but he's got to relive that backwards and he feels the emotions come upon them before it's all gone and that when he's got the emotion of happiness that the passion has been fulfilled, it's gone. And that's his torture, that's his agony. On a stanza four, his partner, the woman, is mentioned and how he loves her wildly. But rather than growing all together and again having that fulfillment and satisfaction uh, in their companionship and love, he's got to watch everything that he had crumble and be removed from him. Because the word regressed means that something becomes less, it's, it's, tape, it's removed. It's like his life and his feelings are devalued. Everything regresses towards that morning, and that's just not the morning of the day, but it's the morning of life. That is an image to do with youth. Because in the next line, he watches this woman that he loved so wildly through his life turn into this young childlike character who is described as being barefooted in the straw hat. And that really emphasizes a sense of childish innocence and youth because she's no longer that woman she's gone into this child and he, he doesn't have the relationship that he once did with her and he can't ever ever more he's got to watch ironically her potential of youth and beauty not grow into the woman that he loved but reverse into the child into a baby and then be taken away from him and in that moment in this part it's a little bit like that F. Scott Fitzgerald novel Benjamin Button you may have seen the film, where the character regresses back into a child and dies from his birth. Interesting. 
here as well, the hard G sounds of in the garden growing younger, and again those longer vowel sounds there, really, I think, convey his frustration at what's happening. He's again tortured, he's suffering throughout all of this ordeal. He realizes that actually, perhaps to die in the water, to drown, to have accepted his fate would have been a lot better than having to live out this misery where he is powerless to change his life, to rewrite his history, to alter anything that's gone on because he's living it backwards especially. He's got no satisfaction. There's no fulfillment. And that takes us across to our final stanza, stanza five. So, stanza five, the final stanza in the poem, begins with this ultimate loss and separation of him from the woman that he loved. Because she's gone. She's gone back into the womb. She's, he's watched her grow younger and until she's an infant and then gone back into, into the womb. Uh, her death is birth reversed. Again, the many ironies and it's all to torture him. It's all to punish him for uh, having the audacity to ask the three fates to change his fate, to change his life, because he couldn't accept the life that he had. The house is gone. Time merc mercilessly goes by, backwards, until everything that he knows is dear, everything that orientates his life, that he cherishes, is taken from him. The swing that she played on as a youth, the daylight itself is taken until he himself regresses back into the womb. And then, only then, does he have this relief. This brief relief um, before he has to live it all over again, until he comes back out of that water like the cork onto the riverbank once more and has to go through this horrendous, torturous cycle over and over again. And that's what he asked for. He asked for eternal life, the fates give him eternal life. He didn't read the small print, he didn't express his concern about the terms and conditions that applied. He was given eternal life uh, and that's the shape that it comes in for him. He is tortured by the, the three fates to live his life backwards over and over again and to see all the passion, everything that he had, even the sorrow that he had, he has to relive that backwards to see how it all started. And in that, he has no fulfillment. He's got no satisfaction. He's got no control over his life. Uh, and the poet is emphasizing that message to us that we should be happy with the life that we have, that we should live that life to the fullest because we only have one chance at it. That is what we're given. We can't change things that have already happened. It's our fate right now to, for me to be reporting to you here from the bunker in lockdown literature because of the COVID-19 virus. That is something that characterizes the fate of all of our lives, the poet would argue. And the tone there is quite defeated. It began all over. The instant relief is juxtaposed next to this phrase here that about it began all over. It's just very defeated. There's nothing you can do about it. The real unre unrolling towards the river. Some people think that this is because he was pulled in by a great big fish into the water, that he didn't jump in. Uh, the reel would be a fishing reel. I'm not so convinced by that. I think it's just a, a sad image of that reel of his life unrolling again. You know, he can't stop it, he's powerless. Perhaps you can comment about this image in some of the comments below. Uh, and you can look at our website as well. Uh, the link is below is this video too, in the comments section. Uh, and you can have a look at my annotations there, where I've gone into much more detail about some of the things that I've just talked to you about. I hope to see you next time for some more lockdown literature.